Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tosh Customs and today we are beginning our series in customizing 101. The goal of this series is to cover the basics of the engineering, of the prep work, essentially everything you need to know to start customizing, how to take these apart, the way their joints are constructed, even types of plastic maybe and identifying um, you know, potential problems you'll have in the future by working with the specific mold. So without further ado, we are starting with Marvel Legends, but we the, the goal is to also move into Mezco, into McFarlane. I've had some people ask about import figures. I have worked on import figures, but I'm not entirely sure what the, you know, what the community would want out of that just as imports are definitely a higher price point and so they're just less likely uh, to be picked up by people to start off with but we will be starting with marvel legends and today the goal here is to talk about different types of bodies and their engineering so essentially we're going to be talking about all the different joints and how to take them apart what we will be doing is we will be taking apart these two bodies right here, uh, mostly on camera. And then we'll be talking about the engineering of these two bodies. Um, as essentially, if you know these two, you can essentially do the rest of the Marvel Legends line. So let's get right into it. We have these bodies organized right now, essentially from smallest to largest and all what I would call the mid-range body size. There are Marvel Legends like female bodies and a couple teenager bodies, maybe some MCU stuff that sits farther down than this Spidey buck. And beyond this sort of larger male body, there are even larger scale bodies like the like Sabretooth or the Venom bodies or the Omega Red. Um, but once again, if you know these basic layouts, you know everything else. So there's not too much to talk about there. However, these represent standard Marvel Legends. You also have Marvel Legends that are within the MCU lines, and those um, work out a little bit differently. And so we will be talking about MCU bodies and sort of non-traditional bodies a little bit later in probably, probably a different part of the series, as well as I, I will dedicate... An entire video to pinless bodies because uh, pinless figures are really really new to Hasbro as of really just like the last year or so have we been getting pinless bodies from Hasbro and we've seen that both in the G.I. Joe classified um, as well as Marvel Legends I don't know if the Power Ranger line has been updated to that yet but with that, there are different types of plastic that are being used and a little bit different engineering, especially the joints. And I personally still need to learn them. So we are going to be journeying through what I know so far, and then we'll start extending into the new regions as well. I will also have a video essentially entirely dedicated to the uh, female bodies. But once again, we will get to that in a separate part. So now that we have addressed that, we understand that these are the most basic basics of what we have to of what we have to know so i'm going to take these two and i'm going to put these to the side real quick but they will return later on in the video and now we are left with these two now historically these two are not the oldest marvel legends bodies but these are probably the most reliable in terms of engineering and really the direction that hasbro has been directing themselves there's uh, the the other two bodies they're seen occasionally but not nearly uh, as consistently. So what we want to talk about first actually is our most classic body, what some would like to call the Bucky Cat Mold. And now excuse this, this is this was the warm Walmart exclusive uh, Black Panther and I repainted it with some gunmetal, but since then uh, he's become scraps and fodder as you can see. And um, essentially all these bodies that I'm using are scrapped and fodder except a handful. There, there are a couple that I won't be taking apart throughout the course of the series, just because I do have projects planned for them, but they are good examples to have nonetheless. So this is called the Bucky Cap body because this body historically was um, where Marvel Legends sort of got its resurgence. If you don't know, Hasbro had a very old Marvel Legends line 
that they ended up sort of canceling and putting on hold. It just wasn't making a lot of money and the engineering was wacky. And I'm sure you guys have seen some of those older Marvel Legends. And then Hasbro and Marvel decided to market into the 118th scale. And so there was a couple years where the only Marvel figures that were really being made were called Marvel Universe. And I actually grew up on Marvel Universe and the whole 118th range. I had a lot of 118th scale G.I. Joes and uh, Marvel figures. And then Iron Man came out and they started slowly moving back towards the direction of six inch scale figures. And finally, um, they brought back Marvel Legends in their entirety. And some of you guys might remember like the original Mandroid, I think it was, I think it was Mandroid build a figure. You had like an extremist Iron Man. You had uh, like the, oh, it was Puck. That was the build a figure, Puck. You had Puck Wolverine. You had like a super old, I think it was extremist Iron Man, a Captain America. And what came out of that was also this body because the Captain America that came with that was winter was the Winter Soldier version of Captain America, aka Bucky Cap. If you watch a lot of, if you've seen older reviews, if you follow the community for a while, Bucky Cap is a term that you've heard a lot, and that is because of this very very classic and uh, reused mold. It's been used a ton, and honestly, people are sick of it by now. But that's a fun little bit of history for you. So let's talk about engineering here. I'm going, I'm going to pretend like we've never picked up an action figure in our life and we're discovering this for the first time. So what we have up here, we have a ball hinge joint, a ball joint up here. So when you put the head on, it is able to turn and lean. And then you have your hinge for the down and the up range. We come here to the shoulders now. These shoulders are on hinges as well. And they are a little bit staged. They're not 100% smooth. So you might, you, you could say soft ratchet, maybe in some, in, to some degree, but they do have a little bit of resistance and you can see they move in ticks all the way down. So we have that coming between the shoulder and the bicep. We do have a bicep swivel right there. And so that is on a mushroom peg from the shoulder into the bicep. And when we take it apart, you'll see that. We have a double hinge on the elbow. And so that means we have two axis of motion or two points of motion. We have one between the bicep and the elbow. And then we have another between the elbow to the forearm, just like so. And because of that, we're able to get way, way past a 90 degree bend. And then coming to the hands here, there are several different kinds of hands um, in terms of posing and style, but for all intents and purposes, most Marvel Legends have this hinge joint at the wrist. Sometimes it is not um, a, I guess you would say, horizontal hinge, but sometimes it'll be a vertical hinge and the hand will uh, swipe around differently. But in this case, it moves like that and it is into a peg in the wrist, which allows it to be rotated all the way around. So there we go. Coming down to the torso or returning to the torso, we have an ab crunch, which there is a beam that runs through the lower part of the torso. And we'll see that again later on. And so it runs from one side to the other and it is also staged and you might be able to hear the snap. So staged ab crunch, just like so. And then we also have a, another sort of mushroom peg that goes from the lower torso into the uh, crotch region, and that allows it to have a full turnaround twist. Coming now to the hips, we have ball joints, um, and it is, it's this whole peg piece, and we'll see it, that plugs into the crotch, and from these ball joints, they plug into the hips right here. And because they're on a ball joint, they can be moved out, they can kick forward, and you can get a little bit of kickback. You'll notice that this outrange is a little bit limited. You can sand the hip joint up here down when in a part when you're doing your takedown process or you're, you know, you're disassembling the figure to increase the range of motion. And there's a lot of things you can do in prep to increase range of motion if you want to. So we'll look at that as we get to it. Then we have a thigh swivel similar to the shoulder. There's a mushroom peg that goes from the thigh 
or from the upper thigh into the lower thigh, and that allows a full circular rotation, just like that. We have double joint in the knee, and just like what we saw in the elbow, we get way past 90. We also have a calf cut, otherwise a lot of people would say a boot cut, and that allows full rotation at the calf. And then we come down to a hinge joint at the uh, ankle, right there. And then lastly, at the boot, there is an angular um, peg. And so instead of running into the bottom of the foot, it actually runs diagonally into sort of the front part of the foot. And that gives you ankle pivot, allowing you to rotate side to side for some of your wider stances or maybe running stances. So that is a full breakdown of the articulation of the figure. So now let's talk about deconstruction here. Um, and we'll probably just deconstruct this figure and maybe that'll be it because I'm realizing we're already at 10 minutes. The whole point was to have short form videos and I'm already going past the 10 minute mark. So good luck to me. All right. So talking about takedown, um, if you want to take apart a figure, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need a drill. You're going to need something that you can punch pins out of joints. In my case, I'm using a sanding file and it just happens that the handle here works very, is sized properly for that. And you're probably gonna need either warm water or a heat gun. And I'll bring some warm water out when we start punching these pins out and pulling all the joints apart. But for now, let's focus on the drilling. So the way it works is the body is sealed um, in two halves. You have your back and your front on your chest here. And same thing with your crotch piece. So uh, let's see. Yeah, you can you can see the seam right along there. And so there are pins that run in the shoulders as well as somewhere under the armpits. And the goal is just to drill some holes into the body and then um, stick a punch in. Or in my case, what I use is a screwdriver. So my screwdriver, it's already bent. I've used it a lot to take apart figures, but it's generally sized to the same size as my drill head. I do have one more drill bit that is a little bit larger uh, in case I need it. But let's start taking this apart. Um, and as I take this apart, depending on how it goes, we will also talk about plastic types. I believe this plastic right here, if you listen to it, you can tell it's a little bit of a deeper sound. However, this body right here, you're going to hear a bit more of a high pitch sound. Let me pull this arm up. I don't know how that's coming off on camera. This is a little bit lighter. The, the tick is a little bit lighter. And the reason why is that this is a little bit of a more brittle plastic. So it's not going to stretch and flex. It's actually a bit harder and tougher. And so that means drilling in might be a little bit more difficult and cracking might be a little bit more difficult. There's gonna be a bit more resistance off of this. So even as you pick up and play with figures, you should be able to notice a material difference. So the way drilling is going to work is I want to drill a little bit under the armpit and I don't have approximations, but I want to drill about there under the armpit. And there we go. And you're going to see, if you saw that right there, my drill just sort of punctured through and there's a little bit of a jump. So I'm gonna remove that. There we go, pull out all your extra plastic. And then let's jump to this other side now. Let's do it again. There you go, you saw that jump again. Pull it out, brush away some of the plastic. And then coming up to the shoulders, you want to do it just a little bit past the base of the neck. And what I mean by base of the neck is you can see how the angle turns from like straight up and down on the shoulder to where, or straight up and down on the neck to where it comes out on the shoulder. So you wanna do somewhere just a little bit past that change. Now, particularly um, on the shoulders, this plastic is very curved. And so sometimes it might be hard for your drill bit to uh, get a little friction on it. So what you can do is you can take sandpaper or a file or something like that. And what I like to do is just sort of rough up that seam edge. And this isn't going to be necessary for every figure, but if you're finding it a little bit difficult to um, get that grip you need on your drill bit, you can just scuff it up a little bit. Remember, you're going to have to reseal and uh, hide all the crack lines. So 
Uh, in saying that, you're going to be doing some DIY anyways. So it doesn't matter in this stage as you're taking it apart if the figure gets a little messy because you're going to work on correcting it later on. So we're gonna come right here now. Right there should be good. You can see my drill was slipping there a little bit. There we go. We, had, we hit that puncture. We're going to do the same thing on this side. And honestly, this part, you're just gonna eyeball it. You're not gonna be perfect 100% of the time. This is about general consistency. And you'll figure it out. Okay, so now we have our four drill holes here. And then uh, let's crack it open and then we'll talk about the lower torso. So I'm gonna take my little screwdriver here. There you go, you see that? Cracks open, just like so. So you wanna size your drill bit about the same size as whatever screwdriver you're gonna use. Same thing there, a little bit more of a stretch there. It doesn't wanna flex with us. You can see that hole is getting a little bit wider. Let's try up here first. As you can hear, this guy doesn't wanna flex with me very much, which is a little unfortunate. I was hoping for a nice easy crack. Oh, look at that one though, beautiful. And the reason why some of them crack well and some of them don't is just how they're sealed. Like even the sides can be different. So that's just going to be unfortunate and that's where you're just gonna have to really pry at the figure a little bit more. So clearly one side was a little bit more secure than the other. There we go. We got a crack on the lower left or the lower right and now we just need to get a crack on the upper right here. I have a feeling I might need to drill a second hole. Nope, there we go, we did it, all right. So that is the torso fully cracked. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just keep on prying at everything up until we get full separation on the body. And there we go, look at that, an arm came out already. This lower side right here is being a little finicky, but there we go. And I think I probably missed all the pins, so I'll be able to show you. Yeah, look at that. Here, let me, take, let me split these two sides open. So as you guys can see here, we have all these peg holes. And then on this side, we have all of these pegs. So that's how they all fit together. And as you can see, my measurements were actually like, seriously perfect. Like these armpit ones, um, we, yeah, we missed everything. We missed the, the lower ones are here, the upper ones are here, and this got us enough tension between the arms, perfect. So. That is how the torso cracks open just like that. Now, the way the staged shoulder joints work is they have this little, um, they have this little square tab here. And this, as you can see, the square tab has some teeth and this shoulder joint right here also has some little teeth on it. Um, so this just plugs in there like so, and then it just kind of ratchets around very softly. So that's how that works. And so in terms of putting it back together, the, the joint slides in, just slides into this cavity here. And you wanna have it so that the teeth are um, up and down. So you're not, gonna, you're not gonna slide the joint in like this because it won't fit. You'll see that it slides. You want to have it up and down and then it won't slide inside the, inside the little box that's opened up for it. And then for the joint here, for the neck, you can see it has these two little, two little circle tabs that come out to the sides, and those just peg in right there. And so then, if you wanted to put it all back together, you would take your little teeth square, you'd plug your arm back into it, and it's very soft, so you're going to want to hold it sort of like this, and then I'll take it and I'll slide it down into the box, just like so. And then I'll take my torso, the other half of my torso, and I'll close it back up. And as you can see, we have our rotation all back together. So let's talk about lower torso real quick. As you can see here, we have our beam that is for our staged ab crunch. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to really twist it because it's gonna take a lot of force, but these two square bits, just plug into the little square ports right here. And then obviously the other side of the torso will just clamp over it. So that's how that works. All right, so now I'm going to slide the Black Panther belt up off of the torso here. 
so I don't damage anything. Let me just sort of take it off. So now we're going to talk about the lower torso and cracking the lower torso. So there are going to be two pins on the sides of the seam and then one in between. So you're going to have to drill in between the crotch and then on either side essentially of the hips. So doing that once again, you're just going to want to do it on the seam line and I usually like doing it midway on the hip. And once again, if you need to, you can sand it, but I don't think I'll need to for this. There you go. And my drill bit stuck. There we go. So drilled it in on one side. Now we're going to come to the other side. Same thing. Okay. We're through right there. And lastly, you're going to go right between the legs. You're going to want to hit it right at the seam there as well. Hopefully you guys can see that on the camera. Honestly, I'm getting a lot of glare off my lighting. So I don't know how this is going to come out. It might be very blurry, but I think it's, I think it's pretty clear. And we're going to drill right through here. Whoops. My drill was not oriented the right way. There you go. And you'll feel a little bit of a push too. And you don't want to drill too far because otherwise you're going to drill into that beam that runs between the legs there. Hopefully you guys can see that there's a beam. So then pull your drill bit out. And now let's get back to cracking. So let's go back to this left side here. Squeeze our, squeeze our screwdriver in. And there we go. We crack. And look at that. The whole thing cracked off. We got lucky that time. So all the legs, crack, uh, the entire torso cracked off right there. Here we go. That's our sort, our sort of mushroom peg right there. And then as you can see, we can pull out the beam that holds our hips in place. So there is a tab that plugs into the sort of butt portion of the lower crotch. And then our upper crotch will just sit and cover it on top. So that right there is how to crack everything open on a very, very basic Marvel Legends figure. So now real quick, before we go, um, I want to end the video here and I'll talk about punching pins in the next video, but I want to talk about the very basic engineering here. The only difference between the Marvel, the very basic Bucky cap uh, body and the um, butterfly jointed basic body is the fact that you are going to have some tabs on either side that allow this butterfly joint to move. So your ability to crack at the upper shoulders and the lower just needs to take into account for the fact that there is um, some extra bits in there. And that's really the only thing. I believe the internals of this might be a little bit different, but it shouldn't be too, too different there. And then for popping the shoulders out, whereas these are, you know, essentially fixed into the main body, you can actually heat up with some boiling water, this butterfly joint, and you can just pop it out. It's just plugged in. But um, I'll do a little bit, I'll do some disassembly on this body as well in another video. But this, but this disassembly has already gone on for 23 minutes. So I think it is probably a good time to call it right there. We will talk about punching pins in the next video as well as tackle some extra disassembly, both of this body and of this body. So thank you all for watching part one of Customizing 101 for Marvel Legends. Take care.